From the vast steppes of Mongolia, a nomadic leader rose to create one of the largest empires in history. Genghis Khan, born as Temujin, led his people to conquer half the known world, reshaping the political and cultural landscape of Eurasia. But how did he achieve such a monumental feat? If you enjoy our videos and want to support our work, please like, subscribe, and leave your thoughts in the comments below. Genghis Khan, originally named Temujin, was born around 1162 in the harsh climate of Mongolia. His father, Yesuge, was poisoned by a rival clan, leaving Temujin and his family to struggle for survival. Overcoming betrayal and hardship, Temujin united the fractious Mongol tribes by 1206 and was declared Genghis Khan, the universal ruler, at a great assembly known as a Kurultai. Genghis Khan's first major campaign targeted the Western Shia dynasty, which ruled over a region in present-day northwest China. In 1209 he launched his invasion, leading a well-coordinated army through the harsh deserts and mountains. Despite facing fortified cities, Genghis employed psychological warfare and superior siege tactics. By 1210, the Shisha ruler submitted to Mongol suzerainty. Next, Genghis Khan turned his attention to the Jin dynasty in northern China. In 1211, he began his campaign with around 50,000 to 70,000 troops. The Mongols captured significant cities like Datong and the capital, Zhongdu, modern-day Beijing, in 1215. The siege of Zhongdu was particularly notable for the Mongols' use of captured Chinese engineers who built siege weapons. The Jin dynasty continued to resist until 1234, long after Genghis's death. With northern China under his control, Genghis Khan looked westward. In 1218, he initiated a campaign against the Khwarezmian Empire, which encompassed modern-day Iran, Turkmenistan, Uzbekistan, and Kazakhstan. The conflict began after a diplomatic incident in which Khwarezmian officials executed Mongol envoys. Genghis Khan's response was swift and brutal. He deployed a large, well-coordinated force that systematically destroyed Khwarezmian cities. The siege of Samarkand in 1220 showcased his power, as Mongol forces used feigned retreats and surprise attacks to capture the city. By 1221, the Khwarezmian Empire was in ruins, further expanding the Mongol Empire. Following the defeat of the Khwarezmian Empire, Genghis Khan's generals, particularly Subutai and Jebe, continued to push westward into Persia. They employed lightning-fast cavalry movements, psychological tactics, and ruthless efficiency to subdue Persian cities. The fall of Merv and Nishapur in 1221 marked significant milestones in this campaign. This campaign, often referred to as the Great Raid, was a significant military expedition that laid the groundwork for future Mongol invasions into Europe. In 1222, Genghis Khan's generals Subutai and Jebi started a mission into the Caucasus and Eastern Europe, where they defeated a coalition of Georgian and Kipchak forces. In 1223, the Battle of the Khalkha River against a Rus and Kipchak alliance further demonstrated Mongol supremacy. Although this was more of a scouting mission than a full-scale invasion, it laid the groundwork for future Mongol campaigns in Europe. One of their first significant encounters in the Caucasus was with the Kingdom of Georgia. The Mongols clashed with the Georgian army at the Battle of Kunzak in 1221. Despite the fierce resistance, the Mongols employed their typical tactics of feigned retreats and encirclement, ultimately overwhelming the Georgian forces. This victory demonstrated the effectiveness of Mongol military strategies against established kingdoms in the region. Continuing their advance, the Mongols encountered the Alans and the Kipchaks, two prominent nomadic tribes in the Caucasus. Sabutai and Jebe forged an alliance with the Kipchaks, temporarily uniting against the Alans. Once the Alans were defeated, the Mongols turned on the Kipchaks, annihilating their forces. This betrayal was a classic example of Mongol diplomatic cunning and strategic ruthlessness. After subduing the tribes of the Caucasus, the Mongol generals pushed further west into Eastern Europe. Their path led them to the Kievan Rus, a federation of Slavic tribes under the rule of various princes. 
The Mongols first engaged the forces of the Cumans, a Turkic nomadic people allied with the Rus. The most significant clash during this campaign was the Battle of the Khalkha River, which took place in May 1223. The Mongol force, still led by Subutai and Jebe, faced a coalition of Rus princes and Cuman allies. The coalition army was significantly larger, but it lacked the cohesion and tactical sophistication of the Mongol forces. By the early 1220s, Genghis Khan had established a vast empire stretching from the Pacific Ocean to the Caspian Sea. He returned to Mongolia in 1225 to consolidate his power and plan future conquests. However, his plans were cut short when he died in 1227 during a campaign against the Western Zia. The exact cause of his death remains a mystery, with various accounts suggesting injury from a fall or illness. However, Genghis Khan's death did not halt the expansion of the Mongol Empire. His successors, particularly his son Ogade, continued to push the boundaries of the empire. The Mongols conquered the rest of the Jin dynasty in 1234, invaded Korea, and launched further campaigns into Europe, the Middle East, and Southeast Asia. The empire reached its greatest extent and influence during the reigns of his successors, particularly his son Ogade Khan, his grandsons Kublai Khan and Hulagu Khan, and eventually became the largest contiguous land empire in history. Genghis Khan's ability to unite the Mongol tribes and lead them to conquer vast territories was unparalleled in history. His innovative military tactics, strategic vision, and ruthless determination enabled him to create an empire that reshaped the world. His conquests facilitated cultural exchanges, trade, and communication across Eurasia, ushering in an era known as the Pax Mongolica, or Mongol Peace. Genghis Khan remains one of history's most formidable and influential figures, whose story continues to captivate and inspire. Thank you for watching this video, and don't forget to like, subscribe, and leave a comment about our next video topics. Until next time.